uh, at Jan's place. He's going to be cooking today, so he's invited me for dinner. So would you like to see what we're going to have tonight? Well, the most important thing about cooking, mm -hmm. uh, whether this is on a boat or in a house, is that you drink wine while you're cooking. In principle, what I found in the fridge, a few leftover bits and pieces, I found a bit of chicken, a little bit of chicken, I found some cucumber, I found some haricot vert, uh, I found a tomato, and um, we are going to make ayam padis, they call it in Indonesia, or zesto kutoplo, they call it in Greece, which is just spicy chicken. So I've made a bumbu, and a bumbu is just like a paste, and in this bumbu, I put some garlic, a little bit of onion, or, although I used uh, shallots instead of onion. There is some brown sugar in there, uh, some sambal, sambal bajak, and sambal manis. Uh, there is some um, tomato paste in there, uh, some ginger, and... Um, that's about it. So what I'm going to do is pan fry the chicken and then I put the bumbu in with some tomato, some chopped tomato and some lemon juice and let that simmer for a bit. And here's my wonderful little rice cooker, a one to two person rice cooker. So I've pre-cooked the rice and on the table I have made the condiments, which is just the same thing. Stuff which I have found in my fridge, which is a few haricot vert, some gherkin, some fried onion, some achar, and this is called javantjes, which is like little crispy potatoes with some nuts in there, and this is uh, sweet and sour cucumber. And these are wine glasses, which are very important. <laughs> you see Ganesh? Yeah. Very important that he overlooks the cooking process. Put on some salt and pepper. When did you start cooking, Jan? I started cooking when I uh, started living on my own, which was when I was 18. <laughs> I've always cooked to survive, because I've always married women who couldn't cook. <laughs> and I like food. I like good food. I like nice food. So whenever there is food, I try to take over. I try to do the cooking. People like that as well. They, uh, you know, if I sail on boats a lot, and uh, that's why I wrote my cookbook, my Sea Gypsy cookbook. And I can, I can, I can cook upside down if I have to, because of uh, the conditions on board. I also can cook with virtually no equipment. And. If I believe people what they say, is that the result is quite often quite nice. So I actually regularly go on large um, ocean crossings with people, and I used to have the uh, the reputation of just being a good sailor, but now I've also got a reputation of it's a good sailor who can cook. Oh, that's nice. So you must be very popular because you can cook. Yes, because cooking on board can be tricky, um, especially, you know, if you have a fridge, for instance, on one side of the boat, and um, say on starboard, and you're cooking while you're over st on starboard, it's not a problem. All of a sudden, they decide to tack to go and sail the other way, you know, to go and sail on port. All of a sudden the cooking becomes a completely different story because all of a sudden the whole kitchen turns upside down <laughs> and pots and pans start moving and you get to hold on to things uh, so you can keep on standing. And for instance, if, if you want to get something out of the fridge, you've got to be very careful because when you open the fridge door, everything falls out. So you've got to be careful opening the fridge and getting what you want and closing the fridge. So my advice to people is to go on long distance uh, ocean um, voyages, get two fridges, one on port, one on starboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
a good one. I'm cutting a little bit of butter now. The butter is not for the cooking, but for the taste. And they brown a little bit better, they chicken when you put the butter in there. Only a little bit. Tiny little bit. I need a bigger flame. And you'll see the chicken already loses quite a bit of juice. But right, you shouldn't really cook it too long. Really in sort of brown, a little bit of brown on both sides. And then we'll take it out. Take the chicken out. It's not completely cooked, but we'll cook it in the uh, in the bumbu in the sauce later on. This is all nicely uh, sealed now, so it doesn't lose any juice. And now I put in the bumbu. This is the taste. This is really what makes the dish. If you could, if, if this would be smelling TV, you could smell all the beautiful flavors which are coming out of the ginger, the garlic, the onion, uh, the sambal. So I just need to fry this for a minute. Smell the ginger. Some lemon juice in there. You can also use lime juice. I think that's on the recipe, but I usually don't work from recipes. I put in the tomato, chopped tomato. Good, delicious. Yes, Nos is. Nostimo. Put in the chicken. And if you think it's um, too dry, you can put in a bit of water, but I think this looks okay. Just not too dry. So well, we now turn the heat down. Why do you turn the heat down? Because I'm going to let it simmer for about 10 minutes. I'll put the lid on. There's a little bit of room. Yeah, putting the lid on because... Uh, then it's, it's, that helps the simmer, or simmering process. And now we're going to have two glasses of wine. That takes 10 minutes. And then we can eat. Then we can use the, the, the rice. And all the condiments already are put on the table. So see, it's easy peasy. Exactly. Cooking. Delicious, or as they say in Greek, nostimo. I think it's ready to be served. It's not too spicy, mm -hmm. but it's spicy enough. So we're going to take the take out the rice. It should still be warm. Rice with the husks in, uh, on it. So it's a it's a healthy healthy rice. Lots of fiber in it. It's only, it's not a lot, so it's only cooked actually for one person, but it's enough for two. Put in some fresh parsley. And there you have it. Zesto cutupolo or ayam pedis. To the table. Where can we find this recipe? Well, this is a new recipe, and I've just finished my first edition of my Sea Gypsy cookbook in Dutch. I'm in the process of translating my book into English, and I will be adding this recipe as well to my second edition of the Sea Gypsy cookbook.